Today I'm going to show you a couple of examples on how to work out a missing angle in a right angle triangle using trigonometry. Uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure that the question is a trigonometry question because it's quite easy to mix this up with Pythagoras. Um, if you look at the two examples we need to work out the angle and we're given two sides of the right angle triangle. So this is the case where we use trigonometry. So we've got two sides and we're finding the angle and the triangle is the right angle triangle. So the first thing to do then, if we do example one, um, we need to label up our triangle. So the longest side is the hypotenuse. So let's just call that H. The side opposite the angle which you're finding is called the opposite side, so let's just call that O. And the third side is the adjacent side, let's just call that A. So we've now got to decide which one of our three trigonometric formulas we've got to use. So our three formulas for trig are sin theta, theta is the angle, is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. You've got cos theta is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse and the third trig formula is tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. If you're struggling to remember these formulas you can remember the word socatoa. So -ka -toa. OK, so let's decide which one of these three trig formulas to use. Well, it's nothing to do with the opposite side. Right, and I've got the adjacent side, and I've got the hypotenuse side. So my formula needs A and H in. So we look at our three formulas. Which one involves A and H? Well, it's cos. So let's copy this formula down. So we put cos theta is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So if we substitute our values into our formula, so it'd be cos theta is x, that's the angle, and the adjacent is 7, and the hypotenuse is 11. So we end up with cos x equals 11. So we've now got to work out x, so we need to get rid of the cos. So the opposite to cos is cos inverse, uh, which is cos to the power minus 1 on your calculator. So we need to cos inverse this fraction on the right hand side. And what that will do, it will change that fraction into an angle. So if you get your scientific calculator, uh, make sure you've got it in degrees. So if we go shift cos, you can use your fraction button and you can type it in a 7 over 11. If you haven't got a calculator like mine, you can just put 7 divided by 11. Make sure you close the bracket because on some calculators you won't get the right answer. So that will convert our fraction into an angle. So angle X is 50.5 degrees, that's the three significant figures. So let's quickly move on to example two then. This time we've got a right angle triangle, we've got the two sides and we're after the angle. So again we know it's a trigonometry question. So if we label up our triangle, longest side is the hypotenuse, side opposite the angle is the opposite side, and the third side is the adjacent side. So we need to decide which one of our three trig formulas to use. Just write down Sokatoa. So it's nothing to do with the hypotenuse and I've got the opposite side and the adjacent side. So which one of my three trig formulas involves the opposite and the adjacent? Well it's the tan formula. So if I write that formula down correctly, it's tan 
theta equals opposite over adjacent. So if I substitute my values into the formula, it'll be tan theta is y, the opposite is 5, and the adjacent is 9. So if I'm going to work out the angle, I need to do the opposite to tan, which is tan inverse, tan to the power minus 1. So I need to tan inverse the fraction on the right hand side. So if you get your scientific calculator, go shift tan fraction 5 over 9. Make sure you close your bracket and that will convert the fraction into an angle. So to three significant figures it will be 29.1 degrees.